The Hayden Flour Mill is one of Tempe's most important historic buildings. It is the reason behind the name for our most famous street, Mill Avenue, and a primary reason for our modern city. Until 1998, the Hayden Flour Mill functioned as a working mill. People brought wheat, corn, and other grain here to be processed, and flour from this mill was sold around the country. The mill shut down in 1998 and quickly became a blight on the city. Today, however, is a new day for the Hayden Flour Mill. The city of Tempe, with help from the Rio Salado Foundation, has taken down the fences and created a welcoming atmosphere for people to enjoy celebrations, concerts, special events, and even learn a little about Tempe's history. I started working here in 1961, uh, sweeping the floors on a four to midnight shift. And I left here in late 1982 as superintendent. This, this used to be the office area. There were five offices in here. Uh, up in this corner was Hayden's office, uh, a couple of storage closets, sales manager's office, and my office was the one in the back that went out into the mill. We did 96 bushels an hour uh, that produced approximately 100,000 pounds a day uh, of flour. It would take 20 minutes from the time the wheat hit the first break roll it would go through that grinding roll, all the way up to the top floor, through a sifter, back down, up and down for about 20 minutes, just going like a bat out of hell. It's, it's a vacuum that, that moves it. So it's up and down for 20 minutes until you're done with it. Each time it goes through a grinding roll, you get a little bit of flour. And by combining all of those flours, you have one flour. You take one of those flour streams out, it's a little bit different. Maybe the protein or the ash or something is different. That's where you get your different kinds of, of flour product. Uh, quality, ash, moisture, protein, uh, it's all going to vary because each stream is different from the other. It truly was miserable in here. Uh, the only air conditioning in this building, let's say refrigeration, was in the office area. But as, as far as the noise and the heat, it was, uh, both were intense, let's put it that way. Uh, this building actually contains two separate milling units. Uh, on the east side is the A mill, on the west side is the B mill and they can be independently operated from one another. One can run and one can be down for repairs or maintenance or whatever. These machines that you see here are called purifiers. They don't purify anything. They help separate the brown part of the wheat from the white part of the wheat. Silos are 100 and, I think 112 feet, uh, top to bottom. I think they were 10 foot diameter. I'm trying to think what, uh, what we held, 300,000 300, bushels? Bushel of wheat is 48 pounds per cubic foot. So if you want to do the math, if it's 112 feet high and 10 foot diameter, something like 24,000 bushels in a bin or something like that, if I remember right. So you got 18 round bins, and then where you see the, where they, they come together when they come around, the, the straight lines in there. If you put four glasses together, you're gonna inter, get an intersize. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven intersize bins in there too. No wasted space. This place is built. It used to be a bomb shelter. When I first started here, there's a, a tunnel that runs underground from that elevator, because the grain will come out the bottom of the, the elevator and go on a belt there and come out a tunnel down there with that, all that, the other side of where all that junk is piled. And in that tunnel were, uh, this was back in the 60s, there were, uh, well, what do you call them? Emergency rations, if you will in case of a bomb attack. This, this could be a bomb shelter. I can't say it was not a fun place to work because for 38 of the 39 years, most of the time I really enjoyed what I did. Uh, it was hard work, but uh, you, know, you gotta be willing to work if you want a job, right? This was a site that was considered to be a blight on the city, and now it's going to be an incredible amenity for the public. Hi, I'm Mark Vinson, Tempe City Architect and Design and Preservation Manager, and I'm happy to be here today to show you some of the incredible improvements that have been made to the historic flour mill. This uh, interpretive signage has been installed. 
as well as uh, lighting uh, around the site and within the building. In addition, the walls of the mill structure, the lower uh, areas, have been sandblasted just to uh, clean them up and reveal that uh, original concrete structure. One of the improvements to the site has been the installation of a grove of trees. They provide wonderful shade. They're the uh, Chinese pistache uh, specimen trees that will give nice shade in the summertime and uh, lose some leaves in the wintertime to allow the sun to filter through. Here we see the wonderful events terrace that has been created, uh, a lush green lawn that uh, will be comfortable for folks to uh, enjoy during events or even just to bring a picnic lunch, uh, surrounded by desert landscaping just to give a sense of, you know, we are in the desert even though we are uh, in an irrigated oasis as well. Uh, here we see the concrete stage that's been constructed as well as the uh, gabion rock walls constructed out of uh, wire fabric and filled with rocks. And the rocks serve a uh, function of both the uh, beauty and utility as uh, retaining walls. The, the structures on the site do present such a striking visual image that lends identity to not only the site but the city as a whole. So retaining those would give any new development uh, instant identity, uh, something that you would not find on any other site in the valley. This is one of the most historical corners in all of the valley. It was one of the oldest continuous working businesses in Arizona, and we want to preserve our history. That's what Tempe is, and we want to continue to be known for it.